Welcome back to Dirt to Daytona, folks. Today, well, we're going to be running Richmond International Raceway while we watch the Richmond Raceway race. So that'll be kind of fun. 7.30 p.m. race. I'm actually going to do a little customizing to the paint job real quick, and uh, we'll see you at qualifying. Yeah, we ran for a while. We are... Holy cr... Yeah. All right. Yeah, our fastest was a 22.3, but... It's, it wasn't consistent. We were usually around 22.7, so this will be interesting. All right, here we go. Down the front for the qualifying lap. Forgot to adjust the brake bias. That's on me. It's going to actually make this a bad, bad lap. Shoot. Maybe we'll recover by having a good three and four here. Bring it down on the apron. We don't do that when we're practicing. It's right, 22.8. That's not going to be first, the second, or third. Let's see where we end up. Sixth place. All right. That's, I mean, we messed up one and two pretty bad. I got to adjust my brake bias a little bit, and we will see you at the race. Whether under the lights or the bright sun of day, Richmond International Raceway is home to excitement. The Action Track, as it's known, combines the best of both worlds, super speedway speeds, and short track action. At three quarters of a mile in length, it's not unusual to witness tempers flaring at Richmond. Just notice our dark car looks a little bit like the opposite of uh, Junior's right there next to us. And we gotta get through this first. Oops. Got on it a little early and then got loose and they're going to bring out a caution. Maybe. No, he spun and recovered. Yeah, there's a caution. That's stupid. We got loose. We don't have any actual damage, so we're going to stay out. Let's see you after the caution. Sorry, guys. That was not the way I wanted to start off. All right. Let's try this again. And not, uh, 195 to go. Means it was a 200 lap race. Still there. And I think we get right around 50 Far laps high. in the tank. Clear high. Maybe a little bit more. So three All stops. Clear. Three ne necessity stops, I should say, About for gas. Laps. But hey, at least... At least we got things kind of going now. Not just... I like this track so much better than Martinsville. Yeah, it's a three-quarter mile and it's a short track and all that, but it's just... The cornering is so much better than that freaking paper clap. Although, I'm going to learn to love Martinsville just because of how much I hate it, if that makes sense to you, because you spend more time learning and trying to figure it out. We really did a great job until the end of that one race. And, you know, we've been our own worst enemy all season long. We've won some, but, you know, we've, we could have won at least two more. We could have won at uh, Martinsville. We could have won at... Um, we could have won last week at California, but I got loose again, caused an accident, brought out the caution with five to go. We stayed under caution and finished third. That was our race. We dominated. We had almost 100 laps led in that race of 125. There was no reason for that to happen, so we just need to, we just need to, you know, come out here, be consistent, be accepting of what is in front of us, and, you know, run this race as well as possible. That's all that's on my mind right now is just doing the right thing with this track. Uh, one and two and three and four, are obviously different corners, much like California on a shorter scale. You, you've got the D-shaped track, so we've got one and two. The entry is different than three and four, and then, of course, three and four's exit is the easier to accelerate off of. So we just need to get right to the corner, right to the fender of Stewart before he dives in on us. There we go, but not to Junior yet. Oh, maybe. Maybe we'll get Junior as well. There we go. There we go. Oh, we already got lap traffic coming up, so... Ooh, yeah, yeah, that was... That worked out way better than I thought. I was afraid of tapping the brakes in that corner. 
But we got around it pretty well. And had a had an excellent lap, well contesting with lap traffic. So we we worked our way up to second place. We got Tony Stewart hot in pursuit. But we're doing well here so far. And uh you know we got a long race and we've got a uh, full stint left, 39 left of the tank, so it's our first stint. We're doing well right now. We're doing better than we ever really have because we've been running on the short tracks so much. Obviously, over the seasons that we've raced here in both the trucks and the cup series, that this gives us an opportunity to make, learn how to make some of these good decisions. Yeah, we're going to lose some time on Martin right here, but we're not going to blast into the back of the 161, which is going to be better for us. Martin driving down on the apron and moving cars out of the way. He's driving like we normally do <laughs> as we try to learn how to do better overall with what we do, you know? So that's what we're going to continue to try to do as we try to track down Mark Martin. And uh, we're going to speed things up, though, for the rest of this first stint. And we're going to catch you guys, hopefully, not under caution, hopefully, when we're pitting. But if a caution comes out, that's the next time we'll catch you. All right, we got two left in the tank. We're monitoring how it goes. It seems not to be because of how much we're using the brakes. So it's been an interesting way it's gone. We have had just an absolutely incredible race so far. I'm hoping that we're able to get it around, actually. Yeah, we're going to be able to move, but our brakes are doing what they did at Martinsville. So towards the end of a run, obviously with tires that are worn slamming on the brakes at all is all not clear. great Car high. Girl, 
But, uh, yeah, I think we can make it around maybe this time and uh, maybe even one more time, but then we're going to be pitting. What's crazy is, I mean, obviously we've gone more than two laps since that has been at two laps. I don't know why. Yeah, we'll pit this time around just to be careful. I don't know why nobody else is pitting. That's crazy to me, but here we go. Oh, no, they're not pitting. So we're about to lose everything. We'll find out. Hoping that people pit with us, but I see my flag's the only one. The good news is that we had lapped almost everybody in the field. We just dropped down now, so now we're definitely a lap down. But we just need... Oh, here come the flags. So we got some people about to... And there it is. So now we're a lap down. Pace car comes out. Accident happens. Nobody else had even pit yet. That's so frustrating. It's fine. I mean, I think we'll battle our way back up on the lead lap. We've got an extraordinarily strong car, and we've been making very good decisions in the first 50 plus laps that we've run. Yeah, we get like 60 laps. Yeah, 140 to go. So we get 59 laps, even though it says we get 51 or 52. So anyway, we'll stay out. Everyone else will pit. We'll be in front of them, and we just have to stay in front of them. We, we might even have an opportunity to drive all the way around the track and, uh, take positions back naturally without having another caution come out while we're still in the lead lap i'm not worried about staying on the lead lap obviously we were in the lead and we were in front of everybody so we'll see you after this caution well the best news is that we are in front of everybody so we're gonna go ahead and get right to it and uh, everyone's on fresh stuff. Of course, everybody pit. They were all at their last pit. Well, I don't know if the triple digits pit there. Some of them are multiple laps down, but holy crap. What kind of run was that from Mark Martin? Wow, unexpected for him to have a higher top end than us. He must have just had a better drive off the corner. I don't know. Because we got him this time. But wow, that was seemingly crazy that he was like right on us just for a second. As, as you can tell, we're already... Catching up to Marlin and uh, Kenseth. And he is racing side by side with Harvick, who is actually a lap down. So that's good because that's keeping him on the outside. Mark Martin on the outside, allowing us to continue to drive, hopefully, away a little bit. Harvick is actually, technically, he's on the lead lap, I'd say, right? No, he's not because uh, Rusty Wallace is the car behind us. Interesting. So Harvick might be two laps down. Harvick might have pit. I don't know who pit before the caution actually came out. If anybody pit while we were on pit road. But uh, obviously the top six didn't pit. Which is why we are in the position we are in currently. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to speed this part up until we catch lap traffic. And then we'll come back and we'll start talking again. Because of course the best time for me to talk to you guys is while I'm in lap traffic. <laughs> but honestly, that's just, it's more action. Otherwise, you guys are just watching me do nothing right now. And that's probably not so fun. So we'll be back on the mic when we catch the lap traffic. Well, it took pretty much no time at all. And we're into lap traffic. We also Car see some cars clear. pitting that didn't pit. Car They're probably, clear. yeah, we got a number of cars that are going to be pitting right all here. Clear. And they're not all triple-digit cars because we had a couple of the double-digit and single-digit cars down a lap. So, basically, I think just the... T yeah, there's Ryan Newman, Dale Jarrett, all, all them. There's not great for them that they line. didn't pit under caution, but... Here we go. Ooh, we're not going to do that. He's going to be aggressive, though. Yeah, 119 was going into the pits. That's why he was running as slow as he was. But we're not going to run into the back end of him because obviously that's not the way to do things. And we're trying our best not to. As I do it... Oh, I got on the brakes. It's going to bring it around. Is that going to bring out the caution? Maybe not. Oh, it did. All right. Well, good news is we'll be back on the lead lap. Bad news is that happened. You know, I didn't obviously want that to happen. Right after I just said we're not... We don't run into the 119 and then we take out the 29. It's obviously less than what I, less than desirable, but it's what happened. So anyway, we'll be back after the caution. We'll be back on the lead lap. We'll be back behind Harvick. Oh, Harvick is. Oh, I didn't realize Harvick was for position. Okay, well, I guess uh, we'll be back behind all of them. And I'm glad that the caution came out with Harvick spinning, because if it came out with him on the lead lap, I wouldn't have had known we would have just still been a lap down. So anyway, we'll be back. Get set. The race is going green. 
All right, we're back on the lead lap. Sitting up here in fourth place, working to get back to uh, the lead overall. Of course, we're in it, so we want to just kind of be... Uh, I was trying to be patient. How was he? I was off the gas. I was, like, barely feathering it. Apparently, we're way faster than Marlin. Okay, Marlin sideways. We weren't even close to him when he went sideways that time. So that's on him. And here we go. Back in it. Just have to be careful. I got to break a little earlier. I mean, obviously, what happened with... Uh, we wiped out uh, Harvick. Couldn't remember for a second because I'm driving. But yeah, you know, wiping out Harvick. Obviously, he's fine. He's still in the lead lap. He dropped back maybe three spots total. So he's fine. I would think. Now, I saw that uh, Mark Mart was involved in that as well. So I don't know actually how bad it is, to be honest. But we are stuck behind these two. So I got to try my best to get up on his bumper and then have the better drive off so I can get to his fender. There we go. There's enough dinking around with those two. Was our goal here is to get to Rudd and Earnhardt Jr. What we got in the tank? 29? Okay. We're going to stick with it, obviously. We'll stay out here and keep chitty chatting this time around. As we try to reel in Ricky Rudd and Dale Jr. Oh, uh, fastest lap in the real Richmond race was a 23.270. Our fastest lap is a 22.3 something. So, you know, we're better than the real NASCAR guys in an arcade racing game. <laughs> we're the best. Except we're in third place right now. Had that caution not come out, that did the original caution. We, uh, everybody would have cycled through and we would have been well inside of first place as we had even a five second lead over second place at that point. So that whole situation just sucks. But here we are. Not really, I, we gained on Rudd a little bit, but we haven't really gained on Junior. He's kind of pushing, gaining on Rudd too. We're going to just have to kind of maybe try to run a little more aggressively. To catch them. Yeah, there we go. We start to catch Junior a little bit. I know that the lap traffic will definitely help, but I'd like to know that I can do it without the lap traffic, especially if we're in an end of race shootout where uh, we won't have the lap traffic slowing anybody down. Now, let's be fair. Lap traffic can also slow us down. You know, there's no reason why while we're out here that we couldn't have that same exact thing happen to us. But hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully, yeah, I was going to say, hopefully John Wood will move out of the way. Right. Mark Martin, a reminder, was all over the apron in the beginning of the race to move cars, lap traffic out of the way. Just very, very aggressive, which was crazy to watch, but also kind of cool. We couldn't have done that. We can't be on the apron and doing those things, because if we do, well, you know, it goes poorly for us. Our world in the apron is not a great thing. Still there. We've caught up to Junior's bumper fairly Fairly close, at least. If I outbreak here. Yeah, but that's... I mean, every time I do that, we slide a little bit. We're wearing the tires more than they need to be worn. So that part kind of sucks. But we also, we want to get here. Because here we are. We're on Junior's bump. Well, I barely... I mean, I barely touched him. Come on, dude. They're so weak in these races. I, you, I mean, that's common contact right there. We didn't, I didn't, I was on, I was already on his bumper before we even had contact. And the fact that it sent him loose like that's just ridiculous. Should have been able to bump into him, have him be, you know, he might have gotten a little loose, but that was borderline wrecking loose and we barely tapped him. Anyway, though, no big deal. We're back in it, catching up within a second of Rudd. Get a better drive off here, I'm sure, and get that tenth back. Yeah. Still there. All clear. I think that we have a better opportunity to catch him. I think we'll catch him. We're gonna jump in the inside of Borland here. So we get this position from the All inside. Clear. Try to roll the corner as long as we can because coming out of two is going onto the straight line. So it's a sharp return coming out of two. And then entering three is the sharp part, so when you exit three, you can get on it way earlier and you don't wash up the track, as you can see. 
Again, it's oh, just yeah. like California, just a whole lot shorter. Well, half distance, right? Less than half the distance. Yeah, half distance. Because I think California is a mile and a half, and this is three quarters of a mile. And I love right. short tracks. Here. Short asphalt tracks. I do not like dirt track racing. Maybe it's because I'm not good at it. Maybe I could be good at it. Maybe because in all the games that I play where you're short track or where you're dirt track racing, it's where you start off sucking and I, I like the control that you have on asphalt, obviously. In dirt track, you're constantly sliding around and yeah. So anyway, um, I very much like asphalt. It's, I was talking to my father about that yesterday, actually, and I want to meet him, meet my son, him and his wife. Maybe my wife. I don't know. If she's, she said that she might be interested in coming to some races, but my uh, stepmom's favorite track is Bristol and that's where that's one of my biggest I want to go to tracks so um, it's something that I hope to do soon with them or well not probably not this year but maybe next year I want to go to the Bristol races and I'd like to meet them out there they live in Georgia so I live obviously in Wisconsin so we'd meet we'd meet in the middle kind of middle not really Tennessee isn't exactly the middle but It'd be a lot of fun. And uh, yesterday was the Xfinity race. That's I'm racing. I'm obviously recording this on Sunday. And that was at Road America. That's my home track. I was sad not to be able to go because it was an awesome race. And we just, you know, the world is the way it is. <laughs> so financially, not exactly in a position to do that this year. But want to save up and do a couple things like that in the next year. Be able to go to those races because I don't want to go to the races and be like penny pinching to go. I want to go to the races and really ball out, you know, enjoy the race and not worry about anything, not think about anything. So a couple things. But anyway, back to short tracks in general. I enjoy them. Martinsville obviously is probably my least favorite in this video game, but I, get, I cannot wait. Even I haven't even broke it out yet. It's sitting over. Well, it's out always my steering wheel and pedals. My pedals are always under my desk. They're just slid over to the side. My steering wheel is to the right of my desk, but uh, I haven't broken them out in over a year anyway, but I plan on breaking them out in about a month here and start doing some practicing with it so that I know what to expect when I'm running the NASCAR Heat 5 circuits and I'll run races when I have time to do that. Curious. I know that everybody here that watches is obviously at least a dirt to daytona fan maybe a nascar racing fan overall but um are you guys just nascar fans or are you just racing fans you know and i ask that because i talk about things that are coming up um the new forza game is coming out i love it was actually probably the first game i raced every single series every single car every single track on when i was younger and um that's so for that you know i wonder if if i did a series going through my forza career or something because that's you know obviously with other racing but i always want to do racing there's other games i played oh, i've already done it but i did the whole wreckfest series that's a lot more arcadey but that's a lot of fun um as bmng continues to grow as a game itself we have like a few things with some of my friends that we've talked about putting together and I could do it with you guys. No charge, just just doing it, just interacting with you guys, but it would be recorded and put out as a video where we would do um, box car racing, which is you take the engine out of your car and we go down the slaloms, we go down the track. It's all gravity driven. Um, setting up maybe little fun tournaments, things like that, that I just think would be fun, not only to interact with you guys, but for content. You know, it's... It's entertaining for everyone. I know a couple people, uh, Neological, uh, Komet, is it Komodo? I can't remember. I think that's his name. They're probably the only two I watch that do games like that. But, oh, um, oh no, Soundhead. He does, I think that's what it is. He does, um, Wreckfest, but he does like single player but he does like tournaments or he puts challenges on himself and i thought those were really fun too because you get a lot of really cool crashes and things like that that's just a lot of fun so if you guys just kind of let me know because this channel is for you you know i'm i'm gonna play the games and maybe you guys will play them with me at some point but 
the point is is that the channel the content is for you guys so if you're interested Clear in that eye. and think you'd enjoy watching any of the things that i just mentioned leave a leave a message in the comments don't be shy i'm very open to communication in fact one of the things that i might do because there's not been a lot of interest i think because i said i would be charging a small fee to have people in uh the nascar heat series so i've only had a couple people really show interest at all you know i it's a little disappointing was really hoping that a lot more people would be interested in having their characters come through the series but my point is is um we have opportunity to do other things and and i want to build it around what you guys would be interested in so just don't ever be shy to leave a message. Somebody had said, kind of left an idea, and I had already been thinking about it. So if things don't take off with the NASCAR Heat series with the individual people, I'm still going to run that series, but I'm not going to run it default. So I'm going to do some modding, and uh, I might add, they had mentioned it. I was already thinking about it prior to um, them mentioning it and having them mention it in the comments, really. And I'll, I'll give them credit when, if it does, is something I end up doing. But uh, it's just kind of one of those things where their their idea you know is something i agree with and we'll end up putting it in the content so if you communicate with me i'm very open to those things because obviously it's it's what you guys want it's why we run endurance races here if you guys hadn't if if it wasn't a 90 plus percent vote for endurance racing in the cup series we'd be running the super long or the long races whatever which are about the same distance as the truck series races were and we'd never be you know in this so it was because of you guys and we received 20 something votes at the time on that to run these really long races or these endurance races and it's been incredible but also it's been Clear for eye. you guys you know so i want if five left in the tank by the way i want you guys to know that communication with me is is how we're going to build this community and this channel and the interest that you guys have is how i'm going to Still what there. i'm going to produce in future series All so clear. art i guess are you guys interested in other things aside from NASCAR would be the biggest thing. Then would you be interested in a Forza series? If I did that on top of something else, maybe I do a Forza race or a couple of races because I put everything on the hardest difficulty anyway. So that part of it is um, where the fun comes. It's the challenge of it. As a matter of fact, I was running grid legends a couple days ago. I just wanted to run a modern game. <laughs> And I put it on legendary difficulty with a super long race because their races are like five laps otherwise, but you can do it 5x the original races or the original race length. And I was at Brands Hatch and we ended up winning, but it was a battle for like 22 of the 25 laps even to get there. And then when we won, we didn't win by a bunch of seconds either. You had to run that track basically perfectly. And that was fun. Are you guys interested in road course racing like that? You know, stuff like that. I know when I very, very oh, first yeah. started, I ran. Oh, what was that game called? Cars? No. Oop, we got a car on fire right here. What was. I'd have to look. Please have the caution come out, by the way, for that Kenny Schrader burning. Because we got a pit soon. And it'd be nice to be able to have that come out. Project Cars. I ran a Project Car series and I really enjoyed it, but it, you know, this was back when I was just starting, so I had no following and nobody wanted to watch it. Of course, it didn't really get a lot of, a lot of interest. So, anyway, though, kind of just let me know any of your thoughts about racing overall in the comments. I love to get your comments anyway, and I'd love to respond to them and, and keep in touch. So, just uh, I'm watching the track. We're gonna pit this next time around. So we got one lap less in, left in the tank. Kind of sucks that uh, Kenny Schrader made it to pit road and the caution didn't come out. I really hope that we don't end up... We have damaged... Um, <laughs> got a damaged radiator, so we're getting close to being a little too hot, but doesn't matter. I'm going to come in here. Slam on the brakes. We're fine. Everybody's fine. I know, I know. There we go. All right, so we'll take repairs, we'll take full fuel, we'll take everything, and we'll have uh, one more stop left in this race. Jump right to third gear. No, we got slick tires, slick cold tires, but if I can get out on the road now. There we go. And hopefully we don't get smacked right here. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, we're good. 
All right, 51 in the tank. You know that doesn't matter. Besides, the next time we pit, if everything stays green, will be um, the last time we have to pit for this race. We talked that entire stint, folks, so we're going to go ahead and speed things up for this stint, and we'll be back for our last pit stop or a caution, and that's going to be where we'll chat for the end of the race. Caution comes out. We got 61 to go. It's just too many laps to go for us to pit. You know what? I'm going to pit. I'm going to pit and see what we can do. Because we're going to pit with like 60 or 59 left. We get 52 in the tank. Maybe because we hit the brake so much we can save and actually have it be our level. Maybe. We'll find out what happens. There could be another caution as well. Caution wasn't from us, obviously. You saw um, we'll see you after this caution, see what happens. Oh, we need to save eight laps of fuel, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that, but we'll find out. Let's stick with these guys, see if I can get a good runoff here. We have the lead, but I just... Oh, just comes right down. That was, I mean, that was crazy. This time we're going to be there for it. And he's got a lot of front end damage. I don't think that they repair. I think they do whatever just to stay on the track. So Ken Zith is the only car on the lead lap with us. Uh, for the most part, we had driven through everybody already at one point in this race. Put them a lap down. You know, I'm watching the real race, honestly, aside from the them being a lap down, like second place is five seconds behind. I just glanced up real quick. It's it's so, you know, you think, oh, you're so far ahead of everybody, blah, blah. That's unfair. I don't know if that's what people think, but that's my assumption. And then, but the reality is it's not that. It's, it's just how it is. Um, obviously, with them being a little slower, we're making it a lot more or a lot yeah more dramatically large of a distance between us and the other cars but next season you know we won't have all these cars a lap down but by the end of it we'll have cars we will have cars a lap down not everyone obviously but we'll also have cars that are just not they're going to be right there with us you know kind of like how the truck series went winning at Oh, I bring up Martinsville again because those were some of the... in Dover. Dover against Kraft, and that was probably our best race ever, tracking him down at the end and passing him for the win. That was... You know, those are the types of things that... That's to come next season, so we just have to learn this year how to win because one of the things that we've had a problem with is we've been in the lead, and we have beat ourselves. We beat ourselves at Martinsville. We beat ourselves at California. So... 
Anyway, though, a lot of race left to go. We're going to speed things up. We'll get back to you. Well, we'll get back to you towards the end of the race, probably, unless anything changes. Caution comes out with 20 to go. Whoa. Well, we're going to be pitting anyway, but if some of these cars just slam on their brakes like that. It's obnoxious. So we had a 16 second lead over the pack. We're going to pit for our last time. Uh, I think we had saved enough anyway, or we would have, but doesn't matter. Caution came out. Might as well just get full service, come back out on the track, and uh, we'll run it. We'll run out the finish of the race. Hopefully, because it was a late race caution again, hopefully we're not. I just have to not screw up. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyway, we'll see you at the end of the caution. All right, we got 14-13 at the line left in the race. Marlin and uh, Labani did not pit. So here's where it all happens. Here's where all the craziness can happen. The reason why we're driving as hard as we are is because Dead Zith is for position. So, um seemingly unintentional but it's actually been intentional my arcing in three and four versus one and two to get a better drive off of Clear high. Clear three low. and four when i see when it seems like i go up and then arc it down it was also really good for um really good for getting runs well, this time we'll keep it down but really good for getting runs where we end up coming out of four low on the track and then get a really good run out to pass everybody. We just have to do the rest of this race. Calm. We have fresh everything, so we're obviously running quite well. Looks like Kenseth is stuck behind Kurt Busch. We have no curb to hit, but we do have a... Uh, holy crap, 22-201. That was our best lap ever. Um... We have an apron that we can mess up on, though. So that's, you know, a concern. It was Rusty Wallace that was the cause of the last caution, by the way. I did come out and say it. Yeah, we would have... We had saved six of the eight laps we had to save. I'm almost positive with the rest of the laps we had in the race and how much we were backing up the corners. 
that we would have saved enough to uh, finish this race without pitting again. So it was the right strategy to pit. Not obviously this caution we pit because we ran into that car at the end of the stint, but it looked like uh, Kenseth had pit as well just to ensure that he had enough gas. But um, we it looked like we would have made it. It was the right call to pit that, not this caution, but the one before it. Mark Martin back up here, but he's not uh, not even going to get one lap back. He was involved in something earlier with Harvick, so he's a couple laps down, I'm sure. It's good for us in the championship and everything because he's moving up there. You know, last year he won the championship, so he's doing what he can to try to get back into that championship picture. We're doing what we can to push him farther away from that championship picture. See what we got coming up on lap traffic now, which of course is another obstacle for us. So we're just going to have to drive. See, as we come in high, we're able to come out of the corner low and have a really good runoff against these lappers. Five, laps to go. Five left in the race. All All clear. Of course, my biggest concern is getting into packs like this where you have so many of these cars, there's no way you can pass them all before getting into the corner. Still there. And it's not that. I mean, I could be All patient clear. here. It's no big deal. What it is is that I got a three-second lead on Kenseth. And getting caught up behind these guys, he hasn't reached clear them high. yet. So it could be a big deal for us. We're going to try to hang out on the outside here. Clear low. We, oh, now we're going to try to cut in. I got Mac. And this is one of those clear where there. I'm just going to slam on the brakes way early. This is this is the type of stuff I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. High. I'm learning to drive another lap, you know, just we gave up damn near two seconds getting into this, getting caught up behind those guys, but I can do what I can to block if Kenseth, but Kenseth is now stuck in that pile as well, and that's a huge pile back there, so I feel like we've got, we're doing okay. We'll see what happens right now, but looks like we're, we're increasing our lead over him. Oh, big time now. Good. So... Again, making the right decision where before, back in the day, we might have run into somebody, sent them up the track, possibly sending out a caution, possibly getting damaged, possibly not winning the race. You know, this race, we're being so conscious about not being our worst enemy and completing a race because it's, it's not what you do the first 199 laps or even 190 laps, I should probably say. It's what you do the last 10 laps to not wreck your car and waste a race. In this one, it looks like we're going to bring home a victory at Richmond, and that is fantastic for the team, fantastic for the confidence overall. Fantastic to come out to a place where, yeah, we, we should have won just because we had a fast car, but we actually completed it because, <laughs> honestly, we've, we've, like I said just moments ago, being our own worst enemy in so many races, but we did well. We didn't cause... I think we caused one caution this whole race. We did a great job and proud of everybody at the team. And this car paint scheme may have to uh, be in the next race because this is our best race we've had. Top five in the race, Tony Savoy, Matt Kenseth, Sterling Marlin, Bobby Labonte, and Dale Jr. We hit on all of our sponsors for this race and walk away with $836,920. Tony Savoy stunned the full house crowd at Richmond and silenced critics on April 30th with an impressive display of track magic and technical ability. With that one, we increase our lead over Wallace. Mark Barton is, yeah, he's down in 15th place. He's only had three top fives. We've had 10 of 11 races. That's pretty awesome. As we jump into May, we get our Coca-Cola 600 race. And that is going to be quite a long race to do. Looking forward to that one. But folks, that is going to do it for this episode. Would like to take a moment out like I like to do. Actually, to remind you guys, comment on what I talked about earlier in the race. But also, I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And until next time, and of course, as always, you take care.